of our Divine Mother. Our Divine Mother says the Divine Grace is with us and never leaves us even when the appearances are dark. With love and blessings, says our Divine Mother. Words of our Divine Mother From the collective works of our Divine Mother, Question and Answers, February 1961, page 1, Topic, Radha Krishna. Our Divine Mother says, For there is concealed behind individual love, obscured by its ignorant human figure, a mystery which the mind cannot seize, the mystery of the body of the divine, the secret of a mystic form of the infinite which we can approach only through the ecstasy of the heart and the passion of the pure and sublimated sense and its attraction, which is the call of the divine flute player, the mastering compulsion of the all-beautiful can only be seized and seizes through an occult love and yearning which in the end makes one the form and the formless and identifies spirit and matter. It is that which the spirit in love is seeking here in the darkness of ignorance and it is that which it finds when individual human love is changed into the love of the immanent divine incarnate in the material universe, says our Divine Mother. Our Divine Mother says, Krishna, the Divine Flute player is the immanent and universal divine who is the supreme power of attraction. And Radha, the soul, the psychic personality, answers to the call of the flute player. I am asked to say something. The presence of the one in all but still there lacked the last transcendent power. I shall feel the world mother in thy golden limbs and hear her wisdom in thy sacred voice. A Divine Mother says, I am asked to say something this evening on the Radha Consciousness, that is to say, in essence, on the way in which the individual soul answers to the call of the Divine. But it is exactly what Sri Aurobindo has described in the chapter one in the book, the yoga, the synthesis of yoga. Our Lord says, It is the capacity of finding ananda in everything by identifying oneself with the one divine presence and by a total self-giving to this presence. So I do not think I have to add much what I might say would limit 
or diminish the totality of this experience our divine mother says this experience is capable of changing everything into a perpetual ecstasy because instead of seeing things in their discordant appearance you see everywhere only the divine presence the divine will and the divine grace and at every event every element every circumstance every form changes into a way a detail by which you can approach the divine more intimately and more profoundly the discordance is says our divine mother the discordance is disappear the ugliness is vanish there remains only the splendor of the divine presence in a love radiating in all things a divine mother says evidently from a practical point of view one must be capable of remaining in a constant and unshakable height if one is to be in such a state without exposing oneself to rather unpleasant consequences probably it is for this reason that people who wanted to live that state withdraw from the world and found the universal contact through nature a divine mother says i must say without meaning to be unpleasant to men that it is infinitely easier to realize this state of consciousness when one is surrounded by trees and flowers and plants and even animals than by human beings it is easier but it is indispensable if you want the condition to be truly integral you must be capable of having it at every moment in the presence of anybody and anything Speak of thyself and all thou art within. Speak till a light shall come into my heart and my mood, mortal mind, shall understand what all the deathless being in me feels. It knows that thou art he my spirit has sought amidst earth's thronging visages and forms across the golden spaces of my life. A divine mother says, There are numberless legends and stories that of Prahlad for example that illustrates the point I'm not merely convinced but I have myself quite a tangible experience that if in the presence of a danger an enemy or a bad will you are able to remain in this condition and see the divine in everything the danger will have no effect the bad will will not be able to hurt you and the enemy will be either transformed or else run away it is a sure fact but i add one small word which has its own importance you must not seek the state or this consciousness with a motive seek it because it is a protection or an aid you must have it sincerely spontaneously constantly it must be a way of normal living natural and effortless then it is effective but if you try to imitate the moment in the least with the idea that you will get such and such result it will never succeed then you might say in your ignorance oh i was told so but it is not like that the reason is that there was an insincerity somewhere 
otherwise if you are truly sincere that is to say if it is an integral and spontaneous experience it is all powerful if in looking into the eyes of someone you can see there spontaneously the divine presence the worst moments will vanish the worst obstacles disappear and the flame of an infinite delight will awaken at times in the other as well as in yourself if there is in the other the least possibility just a little crack in the bad will that shines out question sweet mother in many mystics and particularly in stories there are, there is a lot of tear and anguish radha has swept and the divine did not come the divine has tormented her what is all that what does that mean sweet mother for this a divine mother says all that is while one is on the way when one has not arrived at the goal they have all that they insist much on them because because they simply prefer to prolong the human road because they enjoy the human road and because as i told you if you want to be in life in contact with life there remi- remains necessarily some relativity in the experience it pleases them that way it pleases them to quarrel with the divine it pleases them to feel the separation all these things add to the charm a divine mother says because they are in the human consciousness they wish to remain there but as soon as there is perfect identification all that vanishes then it is as if you were deprived of the joy of a dharma something of the life has departed that is to say its illusion they have still the need of a reasonable quantity of illusion they cannot enter straight into the truth in reality if there is to be no feeling of separation one must have realized the perfect identity in oneself and once the perfect identity has been realized the story comes to an end and there is nothing more to relate that is why it is said that if the world if the creation realized perfect identity with the divine there would be no more creation wise in identity there is only one identity if the identity is complete and perfect there is no more objectivization i've already said this somewhere i have said that begins by the ananda of the identity and at the end of the entire circuit of the creation that ends in the ananda of the union had there been no circuit there would never be the ananda of the union they will be only the ananda of identity this is perhaps more subtle but it is a fact the circuit has been done perhaps just for the reason that the identity may find a consummation and a crowning if i may say so in the ananda of the union but if there is a perfect identity they cannot be union the feeling of union doesn't exist there for it implies necessarily something other than perfect identity they can be perfect union but it is not perfect identity like you who cry half to the insisting calling of a fruit answered her questioning and let straight to her he is hot in many colored waves of speed oh golden pace perfect savitri will thou not make this mortal bliss life fair this end O oh, happiness, with thy moon gold feet, Enric earth's flaws upon whose 